Without further ado, I am excited because this is year two for us, and we have Miss Michelle Hoskins back to just share with us about her journey and whatever God has to put on her heart to share. So without further ado, welcome to the stage, Miss Michelle Hoskins. Hello, hello everybody. How are you? Who was here last year? Do I have one of my mentors, mentees in the, in the building? Okay. All right, well, we're gonna see something real quick here, and then I'm gonna start talking. How many people are familiar with my products? Woo! <laughs> okay, so listen to this, guys. This is where I am now. This is my new commercial. And you all are getting a preview of it because no one has seen it yet. Good over everything. <laughs> okay, so that's where I am now, guys. And would you believe it? I started this company 40 years ago next year. 1984, I was a young mother. I was raising three children. I was um, wondering where to do, what to do. I was going through a divorce, and I was like, well, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? I had read that the 80s was a decade of the women. Woman and that you, were going, you could either be a CEO or executive of a company. And I was really intrigued by that because I was going through a divorce and trying to figure out how can I raise these two children and how could I take care of myself. And I read that the 80s was a decade of the woman. That was when women were going to emerge as CEOs and executives of companies. And I really wanted to be part of that movement. So I thought, what do I do? Do I go back to school? Do I try to get a job and work my way up? And then I thought, well, God gave me this vision that why don't you become your own CEO? Start your own company. And that was very intriguing to me, but I didn't know what the company was going to be. And like that gentleman out in the audience with his cookie recipe, my great-great-great-grandmother had passed the recipe down through four generations of girls, a honey cream recipe. And I decided to mm, put it on the market. It was one niche. My family was against it. Do not tell anybody about this product. So I snuck around. Finally, I made it up on the stove, took it around to some local vendors, and they called me back and said it was separating. So I got very serious about it, and then I figured out, Lewis, I'm gonna need some water. So I got very serious about it, and my daughter has it. And I realized that I had to formulate the product. I couldn't just make it on the stove, I had to formulate it. So what I did, I formulated the product, took it around to restaurants, it wasn't working like that. So finally I went to the first, my first client was Jewel Food Stores in Melrose Park. I went there, and when I walked in, the lady said to me, personnel's upstairs. They had never seen an Afro-American woman uh, with her own product. So the lady said to me, well, what is your name? Now, she, first she asked me, what was the name of the product? I said, Michelle Sir. She said, what's the name of the company? I said, Michelle Foods. She said, well, I guess you're Michelle. I said, you're right, I'm Michelle. I walked into, my road, to, into the corporate office in Melrose Park. And I met with a buyer, his name was Mr. Smallman. And Mr. Mr. Smallman was about 400 pounds, but he was Mr. Smallman. And he said he had never seen a minority company, Afro-American female, walk into his corporate office asking for shelf space and jewels. And if his grandson liked the product, he would give me the chance. His grandson loved the product, and I had my first jewel food store, all jewel food stores, in 1985. And that was like, wow. So I, I stayed here locally for a while, and I worked, worked, worked the product. And then from there, I said, well, 
how do I get bigger? And distribution came to mind. In order to grow, you have to have more distribution. But one of the most important things I want you guys to understand as I tell my story is that you have to develop a brand. Everything that sells is branded. Every way people make money, Beyonce is a brand. Nike is a brand. Michael Jordan is a brand. Alica Serp is a brand. Michelle Serp is a brand. Think about that when you start your company, that you want to develop a brand. People buy brands so they don't buy product. So I started the company in Chicago. Then I went and made a call to cor corporate, corporate Kroger. First minority supply for corporate Kroger, 3,000 stores. Now I'm growing, right? And I'm thinking, well, at the time I was doing all this, around 1993, I don't know if any one of you all remember, but Denny's had a class action suit, uh, discriminatory, they were discriminating against Afro-Americans. So I called Denny's every Monday morning at 3.30, no, 10.30, I'm sorry, for two years. And finally, I got the attention of a new CEO coming in named Jim Amerson, and they said, wait, wait, you know, before we tell you all that's going on, there's a woman that calls here every Monday morning at 10.30. He said, well, what does she want to do? She wants to make syrup. I flew down and met with Denny's. Now, I didn't have a plant. I didn't have any way to make this, right? But some of my lessons as, as we talk through what I'm speaking about is that First, you have to have this vision. This vision that God gives you that's deep in your soul, okay? When you get that vision, you need to act on that vision. I tell people that work jobs, that you are defined by your job. It's, you define about when you come to work, when you get off, when your vacation is, how much you make. So you can't buy a million dollar house on a $50,000 salary. So if you start your, if you're starting a business and you're very serious about the business, you have to apply all the different attributes to that business to make it successful. It has to be your only game in town. It's, you've got to take it seriously. And I was taking this very, very seriously. So I called Denny's, went down and met with Denny's. And at the time, the CEO said to me, or to his staff, you know, we have this large discri discriminatory, you know what I'm saying, right? So, and uh, this lady could probably help us. So after meeting with Jim and talking to Jim, uh, I got my first $3 million out of the, I call it out of the box con uh, contract. It wasn't making my cert, it was making Denny's cert. Now mind you, I didn't have a plant. I just was making my cert. But what I did was you have to be very innovative in business. So what I did, I called a co-packer in Texas and said, listen, I was able, because I'm a minority woman, to get a large contract. If you make the serve for me, I will pay you $8 for a case, and I sold the Denny's for $9. I made $300,000 off that contract. Kept that contract for 10 years. It funded my company. It just funded my company. So I'm going along, so now I'm going, and then I'm Oh, I think maybe in 1993, I get a call from Harpo Studio. Oprah calls. She's doing a story on Millionaire Minute uh, entrepreneurs, women. And I had made my first million, so I qualified. And I went on her show. I had a minute. She gave me a little bit more. And on that show, I did something that prompted a woman in Minnesota was getting ready to kill herself. She was walking across the teeth, walking across her, her, her um, living room, and she heard something that I had said to Oprah. You create your own destiny. You are the creator of your own destiny. Nobody else does that. You write your life story. And how do you write that life story? By your vision, your dreams, your faith, you are the one that can take you from here to there. Nobody else can do that. When you wake up, you're the one that starts your day. You start your energy. You start your life. And if you don't understand that, then you fall behind the line of 
Where's my next job? I can't make no money. I can't grow. You can go from zero to a multi-million dollar anything if you apply yourself. I started with three ingredients, honey, butter, and cream. That's all I had to be able to be a company that's 40 years old now in every major retail store in the country plus the military. So at when I, thank you, when, so when after I had that, that, that thing with Oprah, which is really, really good, and, and you might be able to find it online, um, Oprah called me about six months later. Now I'm in Phoenix working on church's stuff, because now I'm figuring out, look, church's chickens over here, they don't have no black minorities, no women, so I'm sitting around telling churches, I can make your condiments. Ain't got no plant. No way to make condiments. But they needed me because I represented this entrepreneur that has just emerged into this industry and I represented something they need. They needed diversity. And I understood that. I got the contract from, from churches, but Oprah calls me again while I'm in Phoenix. She said, Michelle, now mind you, I prayed on Oprah. Oprah just, 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 just appeared. I prayed and vision board me. I want to be on Oprah, Oprah, Oprah. So Oprah calls me the second time. Michelle, the woman, there's a woman that called us that said she saw my first show with you. She was getting ready to commit suicide, but she saw what you had done. And she said, wow, you know what? I can do the same thing, not with a with SERP, but with a video on how to play the guitar. Went through the same channel as Walmart, did $2 million the first year on something that she was good at. And she figured out how to take what she was good at and manifest it into a business. Because once you get that, everything else is just the puzzles. Once you find out where you're going, it's very easy to get there, right? Once you get your map and you know you're going to New York, you pack it, you're not saying, oh, I want to get to New York. No, you know where you're going. So once you figure that one thing out, it could take you wherever you want to go. Oprah called me again, called me and said, Michelle, come back. Now, it's a blessing to be on Oprah one time. But two times, because when I went on Oprah the first time, I had just got into Walmart. I had 90 stores. When I went to Oprah, I got every store they had. That first time, the second time I went back, it was for that lady. And I was able to tell Oprah face to face on that stage that you are a blessing to so many. And thank you for allowing me to be a blessing to this woman sitting right here. We hugged, we cried, blessed each other, and then I went on about my life. Now I'm going on, I've gotten churches, I've gotten Denny's, and food service, that's hard to get. I don't have no plan. But I gave them what they needed. They needed me. They needed my representation. They needed to be able to say, Michelle is part of our family. So now I'm open two times. I think I'm in Walmart. I'm in Kroger. And remind you, I was the first minority women in all these retail stores. So I'm going on along. And all of a sudden, I started getting these headaches. And I couldn't see. My eyesight was gone. And I went to the doctor, kept saying, well, we can't find out what's wrong, we can't find out what's wrong. So I waited about nine months, and then after the ninth month, a doctor told me, you got six months to live. You have a massive tumor on your pituitary gland that's pressuring your visual nerves, and it's so big and so, it's so out of control that we might not, you might not make it. I went into the back room, did my crying, talked to him, and I came back and I told the doctor, you do not know who I am. I have something to do. I have a mission. And my mission is to be the first Afro-American female that manufactures a line of SERP in every major retail chain across the country and to grow a business that can create a, a legacy for my children and to be an example to black entrepreneurs out here. That's who I am. And I cannot do it if I'm not here. I went back, had the surgery, so I had the surgery, came home, couldn't look down, couldn't do a lot of things. And then a friend of mine called me that was in natural healing. 
and we had a long talk. He gave me some herbs. I started taking these herbs. Now, the lesson in this is this. Excuse me, guys. The lesson in the health part about it is CEOs cannot call in sick. So you got to take care of your health. You got to have your vision and you got to have your health. Those are two important things. So you have to start taking care of your health. And by that I mean drink water, eat good. I mean, seriously, a lot of people talk about this, but that was my lesson. That's what God told me. Now, you're doing all these wonderful things, but you can't see. You can't move around. And so once I went through that surgery and got back home, I started a holistic program for my life. I started eating right, drinking water, taking care of myself because I could not call in sick. It was nobody that could do what I'm doing. So that was another lesson. First lesson is whatever you want in life, you can manifest it through faith, perseverance. If you get up every morning and follow your dream, it will take you where that commercial took me. So now, I found out about the health part. I found out about the, the, uh, the business part. And I'm still doing business. I'm still going out. I got every sale, I, every sale that I have ever had from Michelle Foods I brought to the table. I knocked on all those doors. I got up. I learned how the manufacturing side worked. I understood how the business side worked. And I understood how the relations side worked. And I understood how the financial side worked. Now, I never, when, I was, when I started, I never had a bank loan. Never had. To this day, I never had one. But what I learned was how to manage my finances, how to understand cash flow, how to understand that this is what I got to live off of. This is what I had to raise my company on. So once I got past that part of it, got the health part understood, got the visionary part understood, got how to do business understood, and understood that I did not want to work for anybody but myself. And I put those eight and 12 hours into my company instead of somebody else's. Because again, that limits you. So I believe that, you know, sometimes we come to audiences, and I've been in audiences, you probably have too, where it be thousands of people out there. I've been speaking for a long time. But I'll come to an audience and speak to one or two people because somebody here needs to hear what we say. Somebody out here, it could just be one person in here could just, we, last year I was here, and I, the girl was here, and I mentored her. She called me. We did a mentor program. I'm pretty sure her spices are somewhere getting ready to be on the, on the retail shelf. So the part is the vision. Understand what God has given you as a gift. Anything you enjoy doing is something that God's given you. And you can make money. Listen, you like the garden. People make millions and millions of dollars selling flowers to all these retail stores. People make millions and millions of dollars selling anything. Everything we have is something that we had to buy from somebody. So if you're unique in your story or you're unique in your product or you're unique in your business, you have to understand perseverance. You have to be able to get up every morning and put that same energy in that you were putting in. If you was late for work, I got to put on my clothes, I got to catch the bus. No, you get up and you work on your stuff. Okay, so now... I'm trying to take you through these decades. So I did the Oprah show, or oh, I did it a third time. Now, the third time she called me, which I was like, what? Um, they called me from her studio, and they said, Oprah wants you on her show. I said, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Call Oprah and tell her, I've been on there twice. You know, don't make no mistake. Get me all riled up. And I could. No, she wants you there, but she wants to come to your home and do a complete interview. So she did. We did a nice interview, cooked the product on the stove, and we told the story about this slave woman, this slave, freed slave, that had, her name was America Washington. And we all have these kind of stories somewhere. And America was a free slave, and she had this little recipe that her um, owners, ex-owners, didn't, didn't want her to make, they didn't like molasses. And she passed this down. And just think, you know, a young girl in South Side Chicago getting a piece of paper that is just old and, and, and faded. And to think that I could stop and say in my heart with faith, and God says, this is it. That I could take this one little recipe and grow it to a 
a business that is nationwide, that you can see my product anywhere. So if, if that doesn't inspire somebody out there to know that anything the mind can conceive can manifest through hard work, perseverance, and faith. That's all you need. The three ingredients I had, honey, butter, and cream, are my hard work, my perseverance, and my faith. And when I say that faith part, I'm very serious about it. My daughter who's sitting here, she and her friends, maybe a couple of weeks ago, had a vision board party. And uh, I just watched them. It was just amazing to see this young little girl that 40 years ago was a little toddler, understanding the vision of what you can do with your life. And we all have that. You know, I tell people a couple of, uh, I'm gonna give you a couple of tidbits. And one of the things that I say is that a lot of people journal. How many people journal out here? Okay, so you journal at night after your day is over? Journal in the morning. When you get up in the morning, write your day, write your week, write your story. Because I can go back to my journal, my journal when I was sitting and looking out the window, visualizing this. That's it. That commercial, my first commercial in 40 years, and I'm so proud of it. And it's going to be national, it's going to be everywhere. So you journal in the morning and you write your destiny. And you don't let anyone defer you from that. Don't get off track with that. You know, it, it's, it's um, and everybody cannot be at this level. That's why everybody's not here. The people that are seeking this kind of information show up for things like this. And they get the advice like this gentleman gave, like what I'm saying to you. You can be whatever you want to be, but if you don't put in the, if you don't plant the seed and watch that garden and water it, you know, has anyone ever had sod laid down in their, in their yard? You have to water it every day, right, for it to take. Once it takes, you have a beautiful, lush yard forever, right, as long as it's there. So the same thing with your vision. You have to understand that God gives us all something. The painter, the, the rap artist, the dancer, all of these things we get. Now, Beyonce is Beyonce, right? But there are a lot of Beyonce's out here too. But Beyonce, like a lot of other people, have developed their brand. And I tell people about brands. When I first started, I didn't have a brand. I just had honey cream syrup. And I tell people, go get it on the shelf. Over the years, I've developed a brand. And let me tell you a cute little story um, that happened maybe about, what was Keisha, about three years ago when Aunt, remember, remember when Auntie Mama left? Okay, so now I had always said and prayed and said to myself, I'm the real Aunt Mama. You know what I'm saying? In reality, I don't have no, you know, but it came from, my, from a slave. I'm black, and it's Aunt Mama. So I used to feel like, I used to sit and tell people, I feel like I'm in the basement somewhere, you know, on a, with a uh, black pot cooking syrup, and Aunt Mama and Miss Butterworth up in this stainless steel kitchen, you know, multi-million dollar kitchen, cooking and putting everything on the shelf. And I had always not prayed for anything bad to go to the after man to mama. But I always said, you know what, she really, I'm who she really is, right? So one Monday, my daughter posted on our Instagram a picture of Auntie Mama and a picture of me, of my sir. Excellent Auntie Mama. Went to bed, said my prayer, said, God, when are we gonna get rid of Auntie Mama? I mean, when are people gonna realize? When are people gonna realize that I'm the real Auntie Mama? Went to sleep. I woke up that morning and my tech guy called and said, you have crashed. Your internet has crashed. There's too many people on your website. I said, what happened? Aunt your mama left the building. Aunt your mama's gone. And I'm like, wow, that's a strong prayer, wasn't it? I said, that was really kind of strong. I mean, she really gone. She's gone. She has to take her picture off the label. My sales went up 78%. Forbes called me and did an article on the real Aunt Jemima. And so, you know, those are kind of things that, that I, I experienced through my 40 years, that strong faith, that believing in myself. Because you have to think about this, please. I was walking around with three ingredients, just a honey, just butter, and it's a cream. And I saw myself on every shelf. I 
feel, I, I visualize myself on every shelf. I visualize the military. I visualize thinnies. I visualize, well, all those things were things that I thought of and prayed on before they manifested. So don't be afraid of manifestation. Don't be afraid of praying. And don't be afraid. And when you say it, it's almost like if you, you now nah, we're doing everything by line. If you order something on Amazon, you do not keep calling Amazon. You know it's coming. I mean, you're not saying, oh, I wonder it's going to get here. No, order, pay for it. It's got your daughter next day. So when you think about the manifestation, I'm going to give a quick story about you, Keisha. She probably don't like it. But Keisha, my daughter, who I love dearly, was looking for a house for a whole year. I mean, we went to every house. We, every day we was putting on clothes, looking at houses. I was so tired of looking at houses, I didn't even want to go home. I said, I didn't want to see a house. And we pulled up in my, in, my, uh, in my garage, and I said, Keisha, let me tell you something. Go home and write down everything you want in this house. Everything. How you want to design everything. And give it to God and leave it alone. A week later, the house manifests, and she's in it right now. So you have to really not only say it, but you have to expect it, and you have to receive it. And see, a lot of us say it and don't expect it. So you're not going to receive it. Because saying it's like you order from Amazon. You're going to order some, some, what do I order from Amazon? Everything. You order some vitamins from Amazon. And I'm not calling Amazon saying, did, did, did you get my order? Where is it going to come? All I have to do is say, wait till the next day. It's, on, it's right there. That's how the manifestation of your dreams can happen to you. I don't want people to think that, you know, a lot of times you look at people like successful gentlemen here, successful people, and feel like, it was anything different from what you're doing. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was the fact that we knew we were going to do it. We knew we were going to get it, and we expected it. I expected to be in. I expected to be in the military. I expected to be in every major retail store. I expected this commercial. Now it took 40 years to make. <laughs> it didn't happen overnight, but it has manifested. So all my things I have manifested, have thought about, have happened. So in business, you have to feel that way. You do not want to just be, you got to have, you got to be enthusiastic. You got to be like, you know, it's got to be like, wow, I got to do, get this done. I got to, you can't just sit back and not, not just, it's not going to happen unless you make it happen. It's like walking. If you want to walk a mile, like my girlfriend over here, so let's walk two or three miles a day. And I'm sometimes laying in the bed and she walking. But what's the difference of me and her? She walking, I'm in the bed. So I can't say I'm walking. Because I'm in the bed. But when I get up and walk with her, I'm walking. So it's the, it's, the, it's the energy that you put into your life, energy you put into your business, energy you put into other people too. Now, I've mentioned about 200 people. And the reason why I mentioned them is because I learned all these things through, I call it the school of hard knocks. And if I could give it to one more person, if I could shortcut you here, I would do that. And I have had some very successful people that have taken my course. So... Um, you know, I have, a, I, you know what I really like when I do this more so, when it's about intimate, I like people to ask me questions. I think I get more out of questions than, because I can sit and talk about myself all day long. And, and it's not about me, it's about you. So if anybody out here has to, and not I keep talking for my time I have left, but does anybody have any questions? Come on, y'all got to have some questions. She has one. Because, you know, 40 years is a lot to talk about. And I, I, I'm like, you know, I'm at the point now where I need to start asking people with that because I can be up here for, for four hours talking about every, day, every decade. Thank you so much for sharing. So my question is with hiring quality people. So, of course, you have your daughter, but, like, how did you feel? Because you had to hire people to grow. Mm -hmm. How has that process been in finding people who really take your vision and run with it? How has that been? You know what? This might sound really kind of sick. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really deep in the spirit. I'm a very spiritual person. And before I do anything, I ask God to kind of send me that, send me that person. And normally it happens. And so you can go through the HR ladder, but when you're doing your own business, am I ready? You want me to get up? Are you ready for me to stop talking? Okay. <laughs> so so when, you, um, when you're hiring people to work with you, you, you want to hire somebody that makes, first of all, has some knowledge of what you need to hire for. 
But then you also want to, sometimes you might get a person that, that is, has all the things you need, but you need to help them grow. You always want to be able to, to not limit what they can give you, but understand what you can give them. And then that person grows and that becomes a relationship. That becomes trustworthy. That becomes somebody that you can trust with your business and with your information. I know you've been over there. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get to this mic. Miss Michelle, you probably won't remember me because I didn't look like this when we met a few weeks ago at the nail salon. Oh, yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. And I saw you and something about you told me that you were you. And so I asked you a few questions, not knowing who you, you were. You know who I was, right? Did not know who you were, but something about you told me you were you. Okay, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Here's my question. I appreciate so much your comments on faith and determination and perseverance. But the reality is, I too am a business owner. And some days I wake up and I just don't have it. I just don't have it. I don't know if what I have handed over to my Heavenly Father is really going to manifest, right? Because I have doubt because I'm human. So my question to you is, on those days when you weren't quite sure or you had any amount of doubt because you're human, how did you make it through those times? What carried you through those times um, that helped you to continue to go on? Thank you. You know, you see some things that you got to take out of your vocabulary. Don't have, you don't have doubt. You don't have doubt. You know, uh, when you say that, you know, like, the health issues, and not only did I have, I've had cancer, I've overcome cancer, I've overcome a number of things. Cancer survivor, brain surgery survivor, all kind of other survivors, right? But never, 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 ever, ever did I get up with doubt. Because this is what, the doubt means that I'm not gonna walk today and I wanna walk every day. So you've got to not have doubt because doubt is, is, is questionary. It's like, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Take that out. You get, if you don't feel like getting up today, don't get up. But read, journal, go in the kitchen and work on your project. You're going to do something. And then tomorrow you'll feel better. But if you keep sticking into doubt, you're, going, you're, not going, you're not going to do it. So don't have doubt. And yeah, I was in a, in a last salon. She walked up. She said, what are you doing? Something, right? And it was like, and I looked... <laughs> I was getting nails done. And, uh, and, and it just, we just kind of connected. So you, you, you can feel that energy too. Don't have doubt. I, I, I hate to say that you shouldn't have it, but doubt is like your, 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 your self telling you you can't. And you got to bring that person that says you can all the way, all the time. You have doubt, doubt get out the way because I know I can do this. Now I might not feel like doing it today, but tomorrow I'm going to have all the energy in the world. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to make me a shake, because if you doubt, doubt is like taking the energy away from you. So put something in your body that's going to give you that um. You know, just, you know, read something. Call somebody. Call me, I'll give you my number. Don't doubt it. You can't doubt yourself. Yeah. No, I could take, I, let, let me take this question. <laughs> Thank you. I've met you before, so thank you again. Oh, you've met me before? Uh, okay. I, I, just one quick question. Uh, there's a lot of food out here. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that are aspiring to go into grocery stores and whatnot, can you just talk a little bit about the FDA process, the labeling, and what it actually takes to get a food product onto a shelf? Well, you know, real quick, I be, give me, like, I'm going to take his little, he took five minutes, I'm taking it. <laughs> okay, so first of all, you cannot patent a food product, you know that, because we have no ownership to food. You cannot patent. All you can do with a product is formulate it for, for, for you to have ownership to it. So it has to be formulated. And then you can trademark your brand, okay, and you want to make sure you have a good shelf life, you want to make sure you have a good coat packer, and you want to make sure that brand is always in front of everything, everything. I make syrup, but I make Michelle syrup, you know? So you want to do that. So don't think that you can make product and put it on the shelf. You can't. You can't do that. Maybe, maybe I wasn't specific enough. I meant like calories, carbohydrates, oh, and all that, that on the back you, of the when, label. Yeah, when you formulate a product, have a product formulated, you get all those ingredients. It comes with the formulation. And it comes with the person that's co-packing it for you, they'll give that to you. And I could talk to you off 
Mike. <laughs> oh, you eating a good cookie, huh? <laughs> Where's the cookie guy? Hey, cookie guy. Right there. I hope I got to you. Because I'm going to get you behind, I'm going to get you behind that table onto the shelf. Volume, volume. And one more thing, one more thing, one more thing I'll say. Uh, uh, you know, when you are, uh, the, the key to wealth, I want to tell everybody the key to wealth, I left this out. The key to wealth is making money while you are sleeping. You cannot make money sitting there. Like right now, I'm pretty sure someone's buying some syrup off of somebody's shelf. You got to take those cookies and put them in mass distribution and work on your business, not in it. You do not work in business, you work on it. Okay. <laughs> All right, give her a hand, Michelle Hoskins. We have some Chicagoland popcorn. They would like us to give this to you. It's really yummy. So if I don't know, it's real good, real, real good. Yeah, so we got to get a picture. Come on, you know we have to get our annual. Let's get in the middle. Our annual picture. Our annual picture. Yes, yes. I want to bend down. I got my heels on. All right, give her a hand again. Make sure you get to the store and get some of that good old syrup. It's good, y'all. It's good. You're going to want to put it on everything, like she said, like the commercial said.